Not only did this one dividend stock beat the market by more than 7% last year, but it paid a dividend yield almost twice the market average. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the second in our perfect dividend portfolio series, helping you build that perfect portfolio and live off your dividends. I'm covering every dividend type and strategy from high yield to dividend growth, monthly dividends, and ETFs. In each video, I'll show you the five dividend stocks to consider then reveal my favorite, the stock that's in my dividend portfolio. This week, I'll show you five of the safest dividend stocks in the market, dividend stocks that between them have increased their dividends by more than 50 years and pay an average yield of nearly 5%. Stick around and I'll also show you how to find these dividend stocks that will never let you down and reveal my favorite stock to buy. And it's hard to get any safer than our first dividend stock, Prudential Financial, ticker PRU, with its 4.8% yield and 15 straight years of increasing payments. Cash flows in the insurance segment are extremely predictable, helping to smooth out the volatility in the company's investment management and retirement annuity segments. While the U.S. represents 60% of the revenue, Prudential is a market leader in Japan and has a strong presence in Brazil as well, so you've got that international diversification and some growth in emerging markets. Now I'll show you how to find the payout ratio and why it's so important later, but Prudential has a payout ratio of 53%, meaning it's paying out just over half of its earnings to cover that dividend. That's quite a bit lower than competitor MetLife at 68%, though not quite as low as the 38% payout ratio on shares of Manulife Financial. It is a sign though of dividend sustainability for Prudential and a red flag for MetLife with, with that ratio approaching the danger zone. Here on the cash flow statement, and again, I'm gonna explain all this later on in the video, but we see the company paid back over $1.1 billion in debt last year, though it did have to borrow in 2020 and 2019. I'd like to see a little bit more consistent pay down of debt, but we do see that the company had enough free cash flow to buy back over five and a half billion dollars in shares over the last three years. That is a great sign because were cash flow to drop, it could slow that stock repurchase program rather than cut the dividend. Prudential has grown its dividend by 6% annually over the last five years, and it's a very high yield compared to other stocks in the financial sector. With that increase in interest rates, insurers are gonna be able to earn more money on their premiums, and everything points towards this as a safety dividend stock. Next on our dividend list, KeyCore, ticker KEY, with its 4.3% dividend and 12 consecutive years of higher payments. KeyCore is a smaller regional bank with branches throughout the Northeast and Northwest and strong growth in its commercial banking segment, with CNI loans up 11% annually and investment banking fees up 15% a year over the last decade. And that investment banking segment isn't something you normally see with these small regional banks, or at least not that kind of growth, and I think it helps smooth out the risk in the bank's traditional loan business. The bank had enough excess cash flow to pay down almost $1.9 billion in debt over the last three years and buy back $2 billion in shares. It's been aggressively investing in its digital banking platform, but still has nearly a billion dollars in balance sheet cash set aside. Now, the payout ratio here is right around the industry average at 41%. That's slightly lower than competitor Huntington Bank shares with a 43% ratio, but right around 41% ratio on PNC Financial. So the dividend payment here is only about 41% of the earnings, leaving plenty back for growth. KeyCore has increased its dividend by 15% annually over the last five years. That is a very strong growth rate for a bank stock. With a strong deposit growth over the last year, which should translate into earnings on those higher rates, this one is gonna keep churning out that higher dividend. And I hear a lot of you out there saying, why not just invest in the dividend aristocrats with their 25 plus years of dividend increases or the dividend king stocks with 50 plus years of increases like we highlighted in last week's video. Aren't those the safest dividend stocks around? Well, okay, yeah, like we saw last week, those stocks are safe, but the dividend yields on them just suck suck like a vacuum on a 71 Ford Pinto. So while I do think you can put a dividend king or two in your perfect dividend portfolio, I also wanna consider some higher paying stocks, maybe some REITs or, or some monthly stocks, and maybe some for that total return. It's why I'm doing this series, focusing on a different type of dividend stocks in each video so you get the best of every strategy. So be sure to join the community, tap that subscribe button so you don't miss a single episode. Main Street Capital, ticker MAIN, is our only BDC of the group, paying a 6.8% dividend yield and increasing the payment for 10 straight years. Main Street is a business development corporation, or BDC, specializing in loans and equity investments to mid-sized businesses, with shares producing a 9.2% annual return over the last five years. The company has regularly increased its dividend, now up 105% since its 2008 IPO, and often even pays a special dividend. Main Street has 182 portfolio investments as of the most recent quarter, with its largest representing just 3% of the total fair value. So a hit to any of those investments isn't gonna hurt the shares much. 
the weighted average yield on the portfolio of loans is 9.6%, so well above that dividend yield, giving this one all the dividend sustainability and room to grow. It's only grown the dividend by 3.4% annually, but this is a monthly payer and one of the few to produce that kind of share price return as well. We've still got two more of the safest dividend stocks to highlight, but first, I want to personally invite you to get the Weekly Bowtie, our free weekly newsletter with all the stock market news, strategies, and trends you need to know. Each week before the market opens, I'll show you what I'm watching and the stocks that could highlight the week. It's all totally free, just something I like to do for all you out there in the community, so look for that sign-up link below. Eastman Chemical, ticker EMN, is a little more cyclical than the other stocks on the list, but has a rock-solid 3.5% dividend and 13 years of increasing payments. The company has sold off its non-core segments over the last few years and is now completely focused on the specialty chemicals. The company's Tennessee facility is set to start generating revenue this year, so we have top-line growth and a $200 million cost reduction plan should help return profitability and earnings growth. Now, like I mentioned, the chemicals manufacturing is more cyclical than a lot of the stocks on the list, like insurance and diversified financial, meaning the business could fall harder in a recession, so we want to pay special attention to the fundamentals here. Eastman has been able to pay down its long-term debt in each of the last three years, though it did have to issue some short-term debt last year. It's got a strong share repurchase program, though, buying back a billion dollars in shares over the last two years. Not only is that going to help drive that earnings growth, but if sales or profits take a tumble, the company can always cut that buyback program rather than the dividend. The company's payout ratio is also lower than most of its peers, with just 48% of its earnings going to pay for the dividend, while competitor PPG Industry has 55% of its earnings committed to that dividend, and it's as high as 64% for air products and chemicals. Eastman has grown the dividend by 7% annually over the last five years, and that low payout ratio means it should be able to keep up that kind of growth even if a recession hits its earnings. I'll reveal my favorite safety dividend stock next, but all you out there in the nation know this channel isn't about just dropping some stock picks in your lap. You can invest in any one of these stocks with the confidence that your money's going to be safe, but I want you to be a better investor. I want to show you how to always be able to find the best dividend stocks for your portfolio. And that starts as simply as just checking the company's history of dividend payments. Here we are on the page for Eastman Chemical on Yahoo Finance, and you can go here to the historical data tab for price and dividend information. Here we can change the time period to max, or a lot of times I'll just use the five years, and then change this historical prices to show dividends only. Click apply. Here you have every dividend payment along with the date, and you're not only looking for dividend cuts here, but just that history of dividend increases and the growth in the payment. You can download the data into a spreadsheet or just look at it this way. It's just a really easy way to start out, making sure that you've found a company committed to that investor cash return and increasing the dividend. Next, we're checking for dividend sustainability. How safe is that dividend? And we do that first by checking what's called the payout ratio. And remember, this is the percentage of the profits paid out to cover the dividend. How much is it paying investors and how much of the profits are held back for growth? Because a payout ratio too high means the company may not stay competitive. Sales and earnings growth could suffer and eventually that dividend could be in danger. And you can calculate this manually by adding up the last four quarters of earnings. And here we scroll down on Yahoo and we find Eastman's earnings. If we add these four quarters up, we see the company reported $7.94 per share in earnings over the last year. Here at the top, we see the annual dividend amount. Eastman is now paying out $3.16 a year in dividends, and if we divide that by that $7.94 in earnings, we see the company is paying out 39% of its earnings as dividends. That's the payout ratio, 39%. Now, as a general rule, under 50% isn't too bad, but you really do need to compare this with the payout ratios from competitors in the same industry. For example, companies in the consumer staple sector, like Coca-Cola or Pepsi, with those extremely consistent cash flows, can get away with payout ratios as high as 60 or even 70%. I would worry about a company with a payout ratio over 70% because no matter what industry, that's not much of a cushion for earnings to drop before the dividend is in trouble. Now, likewise, a payout ratio under 40% is generally a good sign for any industry as it leaves a lot of those profits back to reinvest in the company. Last check here, and we'll get back to our list, but this is one of the easiest ways to verify a safe dividend before you invest. Here we're going to go to the Financials tab, and we'll go to the Statement of Cash Flows. In Financing Cash Flows here, you'll find the information on the company's payment of debt as well as whether it's issuing or repurchasing stock. So first here is the net issuance of debt. A positive number here is that it's borrowed more money in the period, and a negative number means it had enough cash to pay off that debt. And we see that while Eastman did issue some short-term debt last year, it's generally been paying off debt to the tune of $300 million a year. Now looking at this net issuance of stock. 
A positive number here means it's raised money issuing more shares, while a negative means it had enough cash to repurchase or take those shares off the market. And we see here also that Eastman has been repurchasing about a billion dollars in stock over the last two years. The point here is that any company with an extra $1.3 billion a year to pay down debt and repurchase its shares is in no danger of cutting its dividend. Even if earnings and cash flow were to fall, the company would cut back on that share repurchase program or slow down its debt payment rather than cut the dividend. On the other hand, a company that isn't buying back its shares or with enough cash to pay down that debt, you better watch the payout ratio closer and might be more worried about whether a dividend is sustainable in a recession. We're on to our safest dividend stock for your perfect portfolio, but don't forget to check out the first video in the series for our highest paying stock every investor needs. Okay, maybe naming the S&P Dividend Aristocrats ETF the NOBL as the safest dividend stock is cheating just a little bit. It may not be an individual stock, but if we're talking about safety and dividends that keep on growing, this is a tough investment to beat. The fund holds shares of the 64 companies in the S&P 500 that have increased their dividends for 25 years or more. So these are already within those 500 largest companies in the US with that financial flexibility to survive any recession, plus have made that decades long commitment to shareholder cash return. And while individual companies may come and go from the aristocrats list, since this is a fund holding all of them together, you'll never have to worry about one stock falling on hard times. And this is a who's who of popular dividend stocks, including Nextera Energy, Caterpillar, Chevron, and even monthly payer Realty Income. It's heavily weighted to those consumer staples, the industrials and financial stocks for their stable cash flows and great dividends. I know it might not be the highest dividend yield on the list at just 2.4%, but that's still almost twice the market average. Listen, if you're only investing in one stock from this list, this is definitely the safest, but let me know in the comments below if you like another stock better. Stay up to date with the Bowtie Weekly free with the link below or click on the video to the right for that first in our perfect dividend portfolio series and the highest paying stocks every investor needs. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.